Ever since I've made my first ever frugal living video, I've been on a mission to redefine frugal living as everyone understands it. Because when I used to hear the word frugal, I immediately thought that's being cheap or penny pinching or only being concerned with saving and that was it. And even though that's not what frugal living is at all, a lot of people still get the exact same idea that I have when it comes to frugal living, which leads to saving for no reason at all. And literally the first rule of saving money is having a purpose for the money you're saving, not just saving just to save. You see, there's a lot more we need to be doing with our money. And if we're just saving, if we're just cutting our expenses and being tight with our money, not only are we missing out on life, but we're also missing out on other opportunities to earn more money. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some frugal living tips that open your mind and expand your definition of frugal living. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryans, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save more money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day. Let's get into this video. Frugal living needs to be redefined. Not because the definition is wrong, but because it's incomplete. When you hear frugal living, what comes to your mind? Because I can almost guarantee you're thinking of something like this, saving money, living below your means, which means setting a budget, being financially disciplined, cutting out some of your expenses, holding on to as much money as possible, finding deals at the store, and having a healthy savings account. That definition isn't bad, it's just not complete, and that's where most of us stop. That's where the average person's financial journey ends, and for the longest time, that's all I did with my money. I'll be the first to admit that. So I had to realize there's only so many expenses you can cut from your budget. There's only so much financial discipline that you can have as an individual to hold on to your money. I realized that I was limiting myself by only focusing on that. And if you're limiting yourself right now, you're also limiting your future. And if your future is limited, then what in the world are you doing all this for? Why are you making these sacrifices? Why are you holding on to all this money? Because the whole purpose of having a frugal lifestyle is to take the limits off your future. These are questions you ask yourself when you start to doubt and second guess your decisions. These also happen to be the questions I asked myself. And the biggest thing I noticed was that I started to make changes in my personal finances without even really thinking about it because there was something about what I was doing that just felt incomplete. And the biggest question I had for myself was, why aren't you further along? And that question flips my entire world upside down because I didn't know the answer. But looking at it now, the answer is very simple. I stopped in the middle of the definition. You see, having money in the bank and being good with money is not enough. That's just one piece of the puzzle. Unfortunately, that's where a lot of us get stuck. And that leads to a lot of unnecessary effort and energy going into the wrong things. Because you gotta understand this, a lot of us didn't start right here on our frugal journey. A lot of us had to bounce back from something or learn from some type of experience before finding ourselves here. You might have grown up around bad spending habits, watching family and friends make bad financial decisions that even seemed responsible sometimes. Or maybe you were the one making those bad financial decisions. From bad credit to lack of savings to loose spending habits, we have to learn from those experiences and discipline ourselves so we can start saving our money and being more intentional so we can have a better life. And then you know what happens? That becomes all we know how to do. They don't teach this in school. So for us who do learn our lessons, we want to stay on the safe side and only save. So we develop a fear of taking any risk because we saw that our past behaviors ended up biting us. So we don't even look for other opportunities. We just stop at where it's safe and that's saving. That's what I did. All I knew how to do was save and that's all I wanted to do. Let me tell you what's wrong with that. Once you've built up your savings and your emergency fund, there comes a point where you just have so much cash that you're sitting on that isn't growing. That's why frugal living needs to be redefined. Because if you stop there, the opportunities, the vacations, and the saving that, that you want to have and experience so badly also stop. The control that you want to have over your life comes to an end. And the whole point of being frugal is to have that control. So what's missing? If you fit the description I just gave, this is what you're missing. Understanding. Sure, you understand the amount of money that goes in and out of your bank account every month. You understand how important it is to be disciplined, hanging around like-minded people, and delaying your gratification from those shoes that you know you don't need. Those are the first steps. But personal finance is a flight of stairs. So how do you expect to reach the top if you're only focusing on the first couple of steps? Do you know what the top of the flight of stairs represents? Not only your goals, but your potential. 
And a lot of us truly don't understand what our goals are or our ability to go beyond them. Everyone's flight of stairs is going to look a little different, but they all have the same concept. You might have a goal of retiring by the age of 65, or you might have a crazy goal like mine where you want to retire by the age of 30. But no matter what your goal is, you have to see if what you're doing right now is going to get you there. Frugal living is so much more than just saving money and having a strong mindset. It's being future-minded. At the very start, you're recovering from your past decisions and you're building up your savings. You're learning to stay away from all your vices that cause you to spend money so much and you're figuring out a way to save more than you're spending. Now it's time to build on that. One day I got to the point where I was like, man, I've learned my lesson, I've dialed back my spending and I have a good cushion in my savings so I know I have something to fall back on. That's the foundation. So you've cut the unnecessary expenses from your bills and now you're in what I call sacrifice mode. This is why we got to build on that because most of us stay on this path without making any adjustments. And without those adjustments, we start to feel like we're sacrificing too much and we start to feel like we deserve more in life. That leads to discouragement and resentment when you look around seeing your friends, family, and coworkers riding around in cars that you don't even allow yourself to buy. You'll look around and you'll see groups of friends and happy couples pulling up to your favorite restaurant, going to happy hour after work on a Friday night, having a good time, laughing, and most importantly, living. You'll start to question if what you're doing is even worth it. Then you know what happens? The discipline that you work so hard to build starts to break under the pressure that you put on yourself to stop being such a tightwad and get out there and go live. Go watch a movie, have some fun, have a night out with the boys or girls, you know what I'm saying? Then what happens is you create a cycle of climbing that first step and jumping back down to the floor over and over and over again, not learning your lesson. You see, we forget why we built this discipline in the first place. And what's more important is this. We also forget that discipline needs to be met with rewards. You've got to tweak your budget that you spent all this time creating so it allows you to get yourself something nice or have a good time every once in a while. I have a video that goes into detail on that. I'll link it up here. But once you write down your financial plan, you'll have a set amount that you plan on spending for everything. Once you do that, you'll want to adjust some of those numbers so you can enjoy your life while also building the life you've always wanted. That puts you in control. But you won't be able to tweak everything. So when you do this, you'll have to sit down and be completely honest with yourself and figure out what you're willing to sacrifice. You might be willing to sacrifice your dating life, buying shoes and clothes, or eating out. I know for me, something that kept me away from the pressure of what everyone else was doing was being a lone wolf. That's something I personally had to master over the years, being 100% okay with being alone as I build the life that I want. Because influence from other people has played a very contagious, toxic role in my life, especially when it came to how I viewed my future. So I had to take a step back and realize that I can do without being around people. Look, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to stay focused, and this allows me to focus on my own personal development. No matter which sacrifice you choose, don't let anyone tell you that you're being selfish or ridiculous because last time I checked, ain't nobody paying my bills but me. So I've got to look out for me before I can effectively help anyone else. Now, here's something a lot of people don't realize. There's actually life after debt, which I'll talk about in a second. And the reason I say that is because the goal for a lot of people is to get out of debt and build their savings. And that's a great goal to have and you will absolutely get there. But the biggest problem I see with that is it's looking into the future maybe one, two years down the road, but it's not looking 10, 20, 30 years into the future. So a lot of times I've seen where people throw their entire savings at their student loans just to get rid of it, which leaves them with little to no savings. Or I've seen people throw their entire tax refund at it. And I'm not saying that's necessarily bad. But I am saying it lacks foresight. As a frugal person, I have to look beyond that. Now, this is going to be a personal decision that you choose yourself. But when it comes to me and my personal finances, I want my money working for me. Think about this for a second. Back when you were a teenager, you made a decision that was mainly pressured by society, whether that was your parents, friends, or your teachers, doing the best they could to describe to you what success is. And more times than not, that decision leads to debt. But the trade-off is, in the end, you get a job that gives you a promising salary. And I'm just talking about my life here, so of course your story may be different. But let's say you start working this job that you went to school for, and one day you just decide, man, I'm not passionate about this. And to be honest, I don't even like it. But now you're in debt. You have to keep going. You got the salary now. Your family's super proud of you, but none of them know the BS you have to go through at work. They just know that you're doing well for yourself. Your company has a 401k plan, so you decided that you were going to take advantage of that, and now you have some of your money working for you. 
That makes sense, right? Even though you're in debt, some of your money is over here working for you. But I've seen people not put money in their 401k because they felt that it was more important to pay off debt or just to have some more money left over to save. Now, I know none of y'all would do that because that's the furthest thing from frugal. That straight up sacrifices the future for the present. But you know what's crazy? What I have seen frugal people do is not invest at all so they could save in order to pay off debt. Again, learning from our bad financial decisions and in order to recover, we stop at saving because that little voice in our ear says, you know what happened last time. So it's time to redefine frugal living. Not only are we gonna lower our expenses, but we're also gonna increase our income. When I say I want my money to work for me, this is exactly what I mean. When you work a full-time job, they either pay you a yearly salary or an hourly rate. That means that somebody's money is working for them because they're hiring you to bring more money into the company, which in turn puts more money in their pockets, right? Only sometimes you end up in a situation like I was in where I realized I wasn't passionate about it and I didn't even like it despite the fact that I was getting paid well. Now, when we're going through these things, what happens when we're not careful is our goals start to lose clarity and our visions for ourselves start to become blurry. My vision that I had for myself got so blurry that I was just on autopilot. Everything I did was automatic. When I woke up, it was automatic that I would be thinking, here we go again. Hopefully today's gonna to be better. It was a given that I would show up to work super early. It was a given that I would leave work super late. I would stare out of that back door every single day without fail, because we ain't have no windows, wondering what life would be like if I saved enough money to quit my job. Now, wouldn't you want your money to be the one that's on autopilot instead of you? You don't have to sit there and ask yourself the questions I ask myself. You could simply act and make these things happen, but your foundation has to be in order first. You've got to have the good discipline and the healthy savings account, but these are only temporary points in your life where you're making sacrifices to make these things happen. But we can't forget to move on to the next step on your flight of stairs. Because your reality right now and your future are both results of your decisions. So deciding not to invest is a big mistake. Now here's something a lot of us don't even realize. There's a ton of ways to invest and I'll speak on two of them right now that are very important to me. One is investing in yourself. Let me tell you something about me. I was so focused on saving at first that I was skeptical about investing in myself to the point where I wouldn't even buy a $20 book. This is no exaggeration. I would tell myself, man, you got student loan debt. Put that book down, thinking this is. So before I graduated to reading books like an adult, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos which pushed me more and more to invest in myself. Video one, how I actually make money. Video two, 15 best money advice. I know that ain't grammatically correct, but that's what it's called. Video after video. I must have watched like 50 videos, man, and they all pointed to investing in myself because they all focused on increasing your income. I never even considered that. The idea that investing in skills and information can help me increase my income never crossed my mind. The moment I started, everything about my financial future changed. Not because I got immediate results, because I definitely did not, but because my mindset changed. Let me help you understand something. When you invest, you have to have faith in whatever you're investing in, even if you fail at first. So I want you to know you'll have to have confidence and faith in yourself. And that's the faith to stay consistent, the faith that you'll improve, the faith that you'll make money. If you don't have that level of faith, hang it up, bro. I'm telling you something that's real because part of my hesitation with investing in myself when I wouldn't even so much as buy a $20 book was a lack of faith. I didn't have faith that I would finish the book and I didn't have faith that I would apply what I read. So fast forward to now where I've invested thousands in myself and I'm not talking about school, I'm talking about the skills that I've learned over the past few years that have brought you this YouTube channel and my upcoming financial course. These are all skills that I've had to learn. It's just now paying off a year and a half, almost two years later, I finally built a solid stream of passive income every month. It would have never worked if I didn't have faith in myself despite not seeing any results for a year and a half straight, putting in work, putting in hours and still failing. 
But the reason I bring up this way of investing first is because I had way more faith in myself than in the stock market. And I've seen way more money in return from investing in myself. Now, of course, number two is investing in the stock market, which I made an entire video about, especially for beginner investors. So I'm going to keep this part very brief so you can check out that video right after this. So I've already talked about the 401k on the job. That's your money working for you because that money is going to grow over time. And if your company is about that life, they'll even match you, which makes your money grow even faster. Now, that's not the only way to invest. There's also this thing called a Roth IRA, which I learned about way late in the game. And I'm actually, I'm actually pretty low key mad about it because I just now set up my own 401k with M1 Finance about a week and a half ago. But basically, it's another tax advantage investment account where your money initially gets taxed when you put it in. But when you get to take it out for retirement, you get to take it all tax free and you get some crazy diversification. I just have a baby account right now because I just got started, but I'm gonna show you what I got going on so far. So this right here is my portfolio. This right here is my Roth IRA account. I literally just put $500 in it because that's the minimum you can put in there. And I actually just wanna commit $500 to it every single month, but let's check out the portfolio real quick. So you see all these different stocks, well-known stocks, right? These are all partial shares. So as you can see, there's Tesla, there's Microsoft, there's Google, Facebook, Apple, Disney, all the big hitters right here. But then you look at this right here. This is my first pie. And once you create M1 Finance accounts, you get to make your own custom pies of stocks that you think do well. Or if you don't trust yourself, you can also look at experts pies, but I don't have any of those up here. So I'm gonna show you what I got. So my first pie, has Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and it has some ETFs, which I talk more about in my investment video. But for the sake of this, this right here is VTI, which is just the total stock market index for Vanguard. That typically does very well. So I, I knew, but of course I did my research ahead of picking these. So I have a lot of faith in everything I've chosen here. But then there's also an expert pie. Actually, I do have that, my bad. I do have an expert pie, it's M16040. And that's more of the total, and this is the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. And it's also the total bond market ETF as well. So it has some diversifications with stocks and bonds in there. So it's more level. So as you can see, that's a fraction of the fractions that I'm sharing. So let's keep going. You see some more Vanguard stuff, some S&P 500 ETF stuff, which is VOO, really, really good. 10% return, awesome choice. You really can't go wrong with that. But I'm also not giving you financial advice. So if you pick this and it drops, don't get mad at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you what I've chosen. And I'm not going to go over all these things. There's a lot of stuff in here. But basically, Walmart, Alibaba, and another My First Pie, which again has some of the same stuff. But it includes some moderately aggressive stuff where it has some S&P action going on. You know what I'm saying? And some mid caps, some real estate ETFs, small cap, all that good stuff. So. That's what I'm looking like in my M1 finance account. Thank you for watching that. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna link down all the investment accounts that I have in the description so you can check them out for yourself and see if that's how you wanna invest. In between your 401k and your Roth IRA, you really can't go wrong because they're both heavily diversified investments which are viewed as safer than individual stocks. I'm gonna say this, if you download M1 Finance and you end up picking your stocks and everything just like me, just make sure you do a lot of research before you do it. I wouldn't want you choosing stuff that really declines in the years and then you get mad that you invested your money. That's a mistake that you don't wanna make. But anyway, the app is called M1 Finance. It's completely free and if you invest just a few hundred dollars every single month, that could turn into millions of dollars in the future, especially depending on how young you are and how much your investment account grows over time. And that's exactly why I say this is building the life that you've always wanted to live because the 401k isn't always going to cut it by itself. It can only grow so much and it's only one account, especially if you have above average goals for your life, you're going to need more than a 401k. Now with the Roth IRA and the 401k, they're extremely passive because once you put your money in there, it just goes to whichever investments you just saw. So, so like that Roth IRA I just showed you, if I put $500 in it right now and hit invest, it would go to all those pies that I just showed you without me doing anything. That's extremely passive. Now this method right here isn't as passive as a Roth IRA or a 401k, but it is my favorite way of investing and that's individual stocks. And maybe I'm just weird, but I really have a fun time picking individual stocks. And for this, I use an app called Weeble. I really don't trust Robinhood at this point. Sorry, Robinhood. But to keep this video simple, I pick stocks that I have faith in. And once again, I have a baby account because I spent the last three years just investing in myself. But I'm going to show you what I've got going on so far. Here's where my money is going. 
So I just have a little over a thousand right here and it's grown quite a bit. I mean, I've only had investments in here for like a few months, but I think it's really cool to show you where, where I'm at because these are companies I have faith in and I've done quite a bit of research on it. So I've got, you know, Hormel Foods, that company that, you know, has the spam and all the affordable types of food, stuff like that. Coca-Cola, Bank of America. Regions Financial was actually a free stock I got when I downloaded this app. By the way, link in the description. If you don't, if you go through my link, you'll get two free stocks, which is better than one. But I've also got Visa, Apple, Microsoft, Zynga. Zynga's the, you know, those Facebook games. That's the company behind those Facebook games. Done my research on Zynga. So I got a couple of shares of that. And Best Buy. And I know I got two over here that are red, but they're only temporarily down. I mean, all of them have been green at one point. But my point is, as you can see right here, I've got a good return of 6% and I've only had this stuff for like a few months and that's $61.84 that I've gained on the small amount of money that's already in here. So as you can see, the growth potential is pretty awesome. Compare this to putting this same $1,091 into a bank, it probably would have gained a dollar by now for the entire year. Now, besides all the individual investments that you just saw, there are safer ways to do this if you don't feel comfortable buying individual stocks. As I mentioned before, there's ETFs, and I'll show you those right now. So right here, this is my watch list. You can see a bunch of popular stocks, indexes, and whatnot. But we're going to look right here. There's VOO. This is what I was talking about that was actually within my M1 Finance account. So VOO is an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, and it's basically a bucket of very high-performing stocks. So it's grown 97.62% in the past five years. So it's almost doubled itself within those five years. So with seeing that trend and being that this is the S&P 500 ETF, it's following the index of S&P 500, which is standing the test of time. So you pretty much know you're gonna get good returns with that. It's not, nothing's guaranteed with the stock market, but just based off of that trend and based off of literally the history of S&P 500, I'll leave something on the screen right now to show you, it'll stand the test of time and it's pretty much going to grow indefinitely. So this is a good thing to have as well. I already have it in my M1 finance account, but I just wanted to show you that in case you wanted to just do exchange, exchange traded funds, those are a good route to go to as well. Now, for more info on stock investing, you gotta go over to my other video about investing in stocks for beginners. Hopefully you guys like my extended definition of frugal living because if you're truly gonna live frugally, You've got to do everything that you're doing right now for the future. You want to think about not just one to two years on the road, but I'm talking decades on the road when you have children, when your children have children. Those are the type of years you want to talk about having a frugal lifestyle for. The reason you're making the sacrifices you're making today is so that you take all the limits off of your future. By the way, this is an entire series that I'm making on this, and I'm going to go more in depth with each video that I make. And with your help, my goal is to redefine frugal living as a whole by the end of the series, one video at a time. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.